time to uh, get this started. Oh, I just put on some music. Let me go do that real quick. Actually, hang on a second. Ah, screw it. Let's just ignore this. All right, here we go. Let's just get started. All right, so we're going to be walking through our stream. I should get some music for this stream. I will worry about that another day. So last time I left off, I was working on the move function. I've cleaned it up a little bit since then. But it's not quite right. So let's see what we can do. Um, so let's see where we were at. I think I think I know where we're at. Okay. So right now, right and left work. The player moves. Hooray. Up, down. Now, when I press up, I go down for some reason. And when I press down, I go up real quick for some reason. So something's not right. Um, now, I had set up an event that would cause it to no longer go to the max y speed. Okay, so the absolute value of the y speed is greater than max y speed. So if hmm. that's unusual. That shouldn't be hap that shouldn't actually be able to happen. What was going on before? Maybe this needs to be before the actual move. Let's do that and see if that helps. So if the absolute Y... Sp oh, I see why. I am really... That, that, that makes sense. You know, brackets are really important. Let's just say that. Okay, that should actually solve the problem for this Y speed. Yep. Now, it is backwards for some reason, but I think it's just because I did minus instead of up. That's an easy change, so all we need to do is just change that to minus equals, and that should do the job. Perfect. Movement working as intended. All right, now, what happens if I run into a wall, which was the issue I was having before? So right now, I have it set up with a boundary of 8 pixels. However, oh, I know what's going on here. So what's going on here is I have a collision mask for the sprite. First off, I want to just make sure everything's middle center. The origin for this actually needs to be a little bit lower. It actually needs to be closer to... Okay, actually, I think there's something wrong with this paradigm I have here. 32 by 47. I'm going to just take a minute. I'm going to do this the dirty way right now, which is basically, I'm just going to go and change the origins of all of these. However, I'm quite understanding that this is not actually an acceptable paradigm. I need to change it. But for now, just for testing purposes, I'm just going to do it like this. All right, let's see what happens now. And all these have a different collision mask. That's another thing, too. The idle one may not even have the right collision mask at all. All right, so now it's working. However, for some reason, I can't go down. That is interesting. I wonder why I can't go down. Um, it must be something in the move function. So let's see. If place meeting. Oh, that's interesting. So the reason why is because this was a very bad, bad, bad thing to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get rid of all of that. Um, x plus y plus y speed. And that should do the job. Plus y speed. Yep, that should do the job as long as x plus x speed. Also, I'm noticing that something here. Wait a minute. I am literally repeating myself right there. Boom. I love it. x plus x speed, boom. 
All right. I think this should do the job. Let's see what happens. Yeah, all right. It's working. Now, you might be asking, why is this um, right now the upper part of the sprite kind of overlapping? And that's because... Um, so the game I'm trying to make is kind of like Stardew Valley, and the idea is basically... Um, only the bottom half of your character is kind of needed for movement. So if like, there's a rock in the way, you know, actually I'll just throw one in. Because you know what? Why not? Let me just do that real quick. Uh, objects. So like, imagine this is a rock. Okay. Now if this is a rock, basically the idea would be, oh, I can't go past the rock. I can go over the rock. But right here, the idea is my character w would be kind of over the rock. That way, it would show it would, movement would work properly. Okay, so I got movement working correctly. However, it does feel kind of slow. Um, I think that's because I set up the movement speed to be 2, only because I wasn't 100%. Like, I, I had mostly been working in smaller scales resolutions in this. So I'm going to increase the movement speed of these. So actually, I don't actually need to increase the movement speed, but what I do want to do is increase the max x speed and the max y speed. Three might just do the job. Um, however, x speed equals right left. I also need to change that, and that should do the job. Let's see. Excellent. Yeah, it's a reasonable speed. I may end up tweaking it later. Um, maybe what I'm going to do is I will... Well, I don't really have acceleration. I could actually just put some acceleration in. Just by increasing the maximum speed, that alone should do the job. I may flip those around for consistency. Do down minus up. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of... It takes a moment. You know what? I just want to see how much slower it would be if it was like half point point five. You know, like if the acceleration was just a teeny bit less. So it takes six frames to actually move to full speed instead of three. Let's see how that looks. Uh, it might... It gives a little bit of a lag to the start, but that's okay. You kind of want a bit of a lag to the start, I think. I want to really go extreme. Let's do 0 0.05, just so that way. This will take a full second to get to full speed. I want to just see how this feels. Yeah, that's no fun. And also, it makes funny things happen. Okay, let's just go back to... I think we'll just leave it at than normal. It's, there's no issue. Um, I'll flip this around and just double check to make sure this works. So down, minus, up. Okay. Perfect. Now, alright, this looks great. Okay, so that is all done. Let me just double check the collision masks of all of these items. Yeah, these are all auto automatic. The idle one, however, has the proper collision mask. So let's now get the correct collision mask for all these items. That shouldn't be too hard. So it's worth noting that this is a different object. Um, the collision mask for this item is actually... It, it, like, really, the player's controlling the blue square and the top square, which is the cyan or teal or square, or whatever color that might be, is supposed to kind of be the upper part of the character, um, the upper half of the character. Like, if you were thinking of it, like, there's, a, like, a head up here, shoulders, and then there'd be legs down there. So, let's see. Okay. And by the way, in case you're worried, yeah, I do actually make sprites. I'm not completely useless. But for now, I just want to get some of the programming done. I don't even know why I did that. I really didn't need to. All right, so now I want to set it up the proper um, sprite. So let's 
let's actually make a script because you know what I, I don't do enough of that so we're gonna do a create script and this one will be called um, assign sprite by direction you know half the times when I'm doing this I don't know if like, I'm doing a great thing because of the uh, um, you know, I'm a novice programmer, so like learning how to like, you know, what should go into a script or not. You know, I think that in general, trying to make things go into scripts makes it more readable. All right, uh, let's see here. Give me one moment. What? Oh, I see. Yeah. All right, so. Let's get rolling here. So we need to assign the sprite by the direction. So the direction that we're actually going to go is going to be... So the sprite we're going to want to use is going to be one of four sprites. The way we're going to determine which sprite we're using is based on the sign of the x speed or y speed. Now. I already kind of can see a problem happening, which is where, what if I'm going up and right? How does it assign that? And I think it would base it on whichever one is greater, but then it would default to one. Um, and I think I would rather have it default to the right or left. So let's get this rolling. Okay. So the first thing is I'm going to need some params, parameters. Uh, param x speed, uh, param y speed. Bar. Um, I'm gonna. This is a local variable, so x speed equals uh, argument zero. Whoops. Bar. Y speed equals argument one. Why do I keep doing that? Okay. So we've assigned the arguments into the variables. It's going to be the x speed and the y speed, and it's going to return either up, down, left, or right, and then it's going to have a switch statement. Well, actually, I don't... Hmm. Is there actually a way to do that where I could have it set up so that way it would take in a group of... I bet you there's got to be a way to do it, where it would assign the sprite index based on a group? Let me just check something. Sprite group group let's see can I find something what is this this might be what I need you can retrieve the sprite index of each of the sprites assigned to texture pages within the given texture group you supply the texture group ID string as defined in the texture group and the function will be given a 1d array where each entry contains a sprite index Let's see what the example looks like. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is what I need. Um, I do think that there's probably a right a way to get this set up. I'm gonna just do it the dir a dirty way first, or I'm gonna have two different scripts. I might have a script for. <sighs> See, this is what's so annoying about programming, I feel like, for me at least, is like I can kind of get an idea of something I want to do, but then I've got this problem, like I, I've got this problem where I want to optimize it, but I don't quite know how to. And I think that the easiest way is perhaps to just try to make it, and you know, in a couple of those circumstances, brute force it once or twice. And then see what you can do. Okay, so we're gonna assign, the, we're gonna return the direction. The direction will be returned as up, down, left, right, and then it will, then that will return into a new, another script. Jesus, scripts and scripts and scripts. Which is gonna be assign player movement sprite. Okay. Did I do ass player movement? I did. That was completely unintentional. There we go. 
All right, so it's going to be a script that goes into a script. And both of them are going to be called. So let's just go to the player object. I really don't need all these, but whatever, I'm already there. Let's go into the player object. Assign. And should it be before the move? It has to be directly before the move. So maybe I'll do it right here. Assign sprite by direction. So this is actually going to return a string. So this will be var sprite direction equals. And it's going to take in the x speed and the y speed. And it's going to return up, down, left, right. That's going to return the, the specific sprite we're going to use. And then we're going to do assign player movement sprite with sprite direction. And that's going to be a string. All right. Expected zero got one. Oh, OK, because I haven't quite made it. All right, so let's go down to here. Um, oops, that's the wrong one. I'm going to go here. So we're going to do a switch state switch. Actually, I guess it would be... Okay, so what we want to do is we want it to return... Okay. If our direction equals that. Return. And you know what? Actually, I think the default direction... Hmm. Actually, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, if the way that I'm thinking, I mean, I have to actually write this out in order to get this set up correctly, but if I put that direction as a parameter, Facing. That's the name of it. It's facing. That's the that's the word I was looking for earlier. Facing. So let's actually go to O player. Add a variable, and we're gonna call it facing. And it's gonna be a string. And we will start it default as right. And actually what we will do instead is we will change facing to equal assign sprite by direction. But it should only do that if x and y speeds are um, not equal to zero. Because if I'm moving to the right and then suddenly I stop, I don't want it to change the direction. So actually what we'll do is if x speed equals zero and y speed equals zero, um, facing will change then. I can already see another problem. So the other problem I'm going to have is that if I assign a new sprite every step, hmm, if I assign a new sprite every single step, that's going to have problems down the road. And in fact, I should probably animate these sprites just so that way I know that they're working correctly. Hmm. It's actually, this is wrong. It should be not equal to zero, and this should be or y speed not equal to zero. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Oh! Actually, I see the big problem I've got. Uh, the idle sprite is actually going to be different. There's going to be an idle up, down, left, right. So right now, actually, what I've got, these sprites right here, these placeholder sprites, these are actually my moving sprites, so I'm going to rename them. Uh, moving. Oops. 
and we'll add to the end. Moving. Because there's actually going to be a right, left, up, down, at rest. Tedious. You know, programming is kind of tedious sometimes. So, now. Huh. So, what I can do is I can. First off, let me go and make this consistent because this isn't correct. Uh, I have it as a full bar across. So, let's just quickly edit this and make this right. Okay, uh, we'll pick that up. Just need to change that. Uh, I think there's an extra. Yeah, that that makes sense. There's an extra. Boom. Yep, that's correct. Okay. So I'm going to go into the idle. I'm going to duplicate this four times because there's going to be a right one and a left. that's really funny. It goes to eleven. 111, that's so funny. Okay, um, so this one's going to be rename, and this one's actually going to be S player idle, right, oops, right. Left. So what this is letting me know is it's letting me know the things I'm going to have to eventually cr cr create. And I think that's really important because um, I don't actually know what assets I need to make. And knowing what assets I need to make ahead of time will help a lot. Okay, uh, let's edit this image. We're just going to we're gonna make this super, super simple. Is there a polygon tool? Yeah, here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take that red color and I'll have it go like this. Actually, maybe I'll just use the line. What? No. Stop that. Um, here, we'll do it like this, just because... Why not? Bucket. Boom. Alright, this is right. No, this is idle right. Let's edit this one. I'm going to close all the windows after this. Idle left. Nope, I don't like that. Boom. Dump it in. Idle up. Man, if anyone who is experienced ever watched this, they'd probably be like, this is very cringy. But that's okay. I'm doing this as a way to track what I do really more so than anything. And you know, make sure that I stay accountable to just doing this project. I don't expect this channel to get a lot of viewers or anything. I'm just doing it for the sheer joy of programming. Okay. So now this may have caused a problem in my player, but fortunately my player is right. That's what I want. What is this error here for argument six? Because I still haven't made that script, and then we'll figure out what's going on there in a minute. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um. So what do I need to do now? What's this here? Is this syntax error? Alright, well, I'm not going to worry so much about that. Okay. Um, so, actually, first, if x speed equals 0 and y speed equals 0. So actually, I guess it'd want to be idle and moving. Those are really the only two 
Because since this is a state machine, I only need to worry about assigning the sprites for when my character is walking or moving. So I don't need to worry about like attacking or anything. So I can have the um, I can have it set up in here. Now I think the thing is is I need to determine because I want it to be able to play through an animation. I, I don't want it to like assign a sprite every single step because if it does that, then the sprite that's assigned will just go back to index zero and it won't actually animate. So I need to like really think about how I'm going to How am I going to make it so that way when I change my facing? Oh! Hang on a minute. Alright, so let me get, let me think about this straight. So, one of the things that's going to happen is, so like, if your character was walking, they'd be moving their legs. If suddenly, when they move, let's just say, like, you know, they've got their right leg out, and their left leg is backwards and then I change my facing to be forwards, I would still want the left leg to be backwards and the right leg to be forward. And the way that I'm going to animate the sprites, I'm going to make sure that it's the same gait, G-A-I-T, in both directions, whether it's north, south, west, down, it doesn't matter. <laughs> north, south, east, west, Jesus Christ. Um, so, that actually... Maybe what it's going to do is it'll... Hmm. Alright. Truth is, I do need to figure out the facing. And this can be its own thing. So let's just do that. Let's just get this set up. We don't need this right now. But um, for facing, so actually, we're going to want to have a previous facing as an argument now as well. So at param equals current oops, facing var, this will be the local variable, facing equals argument. Now, let me just double check to make sure I didn't do something really dumb here. Hang on, let me... I need to close some of these. Facing is that. Okay, alright. Um, I'm actually going to close all the windows real quick and then just open what I need. So I need assign sprite by direction, assign player movement sprite, and the player object. Okay, now, um, don't need this down here. Did I hide it? I hide it. I also hit Control Z, which did something that it shouldn't have. You can close this one. That is correct. I think I know what change it. I wish I could see the undo history. <laughs> That's something that GIMP has. That's pretty nice. Okay. This actually should be facing. Return facing. Okay. Um, so if x speed is greater than zero, so this is if the x is going to the right, then facing equals right. You know, I should really figure out how to do constants. Um, I, I know that in um, other programming languages that I've played around with, uh, you can like set up constants so that way like I could just type in right in all caps and it'll always return that exact string. So like if I have a complicated string, I don't need to worry about like misspelling it or something. Um, I could figure that out, but honestly, it's not a huge priority for me because these are pretty simple so far. Alright, if y speed is greater than zero, so this is if it's going up, which means it's going down, 
because that's the way the game maker works. Um, we do the facing equals down. I may have to change this and we'll figure it out if I'm right or wrong. Um, so this actually could be a switch statement, maybe. Case, case. I mean, it's really not... I mean, I'm, I'm not going to make a switch statement for two if statements. I'll make a switch statement for three or more. You know, I'm not going to do it for two. So if my sp speed is less than zero, facing equals up. Okay. And that's it. Oh, okay. Um... Now, the thing is, I want to check to see if my current facing, and the reason why I had to have the facing in there, I'm pretty sure, is I wanted to, oh, okay, so here's the thing. The way that I have this structured, I just realized, the way that I have this structured is actually going to favor the Ys. So I actually want to put these after. Because, like, so, for instance, if I'm moving up and to the right, if I'm moving up and to the right, I want it to be favoring the sprite. Huh. Actually, this doesn't really work the way I want it to. I have to actually figure it out by the angle of this image. If I'm moving up and to the right, I actually want it to be the previous facing. So I'm going to store that in a variable. I'm going to make a new one. This is going to be called var previous facing, which is going to be equal to facing. And the idea is if previous facing, so basically if, if the previous facing equals Because the previous facing is basically what it will become. In general, I want to favor the new facing, but there are going to be situations where I'm going to want it to... <sighs> this is complicated. I know, right? And this is only just movement. Can you imagine how hard it'll be when I actually try to do, like, anything else? All right, let's see here. So we've got our previous facing, which equals facing. The old facing and the new facing. I may not actually need that, but let's think. So right now, if I were moving, let's just say an... Oh, okay. Um, all right, so what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to skew it towards whichever way has a higher speed with it favoring the... Hmm. It doesn't really matter, does it? Hmm. So it's going to be if y speed is greater than zero and, and here's where I think it's important, and ABS, so the absolute value of the y speed is greater than the absolute value of the x speed. And now does that do it right? So the basic idea here is if I am moving... Okay, so if I'm pressing both W and D, that means I'm going at a 45 degree angle. My Y speed will be 3, and my X speed will be 3. At that point, it'll probably just use whatever the previous facing was. I may end up actually needing that previous facing thing, but that's okay. I'll just leave it there for now. Um, but if I... Let's just say I'm moving up, and then I begin to add a bit of right by pressing D... 
then what would happen is because the first frame, my x speed, my my x speed and y speed are. Hmm. Hang on. Oh, I'm like a moment away from figuring this out. Um. Oh, it's so close. I know, this is like easy stuff. <laughs> Alright, it should be easy stuff. But it's new to me. Alright, let's see here. Maybe what it is. Okay, I think I figured it out. This is actually not going to be its own thing. This is going to be its a um, a new if statement. If so, in this case, if the absolute value of the y speed is greater than the absolute value of the x speed then it's going to um, return <sighs> you know what why don't I just ignore this for a minute and just see how it looks we'll come back to this later I'm just gonna make a quick note in here script might be adjusted to favor maintaining a direction in I mean I, and that will I, I want to you know I will put a to do there even that's one thing I wish this thing had was a to do thing so I wonder if it does nope okay all right whatever we're just gonna work with that okay so right now it's gonna turn up down right left awesome uh, assign player movement sprite based on the sprite direction hmm. so actually right here what I can do is previous facing equals facing and the reason why I'm going to do it like this is you'll see why in a minute far because I'm going to actually compare the two the previous facing versus the new facing so it's going to assign a new facing and then it would be if what am I checking here if facing equals previous facing So if facing is not equal to previous facing, and by the way, I need to get rid of the underscore because I don't have that as a local variable. All right, so then what we do is we give it the new sprite. Assign player movement sprite with sprite direction. Okay, now I need to go make this script. Okay, so let me just walk through this to make sure this makes sense. So the x speed is not equal to zero, y speed is not equal to zero. That means we're moving. So it's gonna check the facing. If when it goes and returns the facing, it turns out that the new facing is different than the old facing, then what it's gonna do is gonna assign a new sprite. But the thing is, is that if I continue to move to the right, I don't want the sprite to change. So if the facing that is returned by this equals the previous facing, then that means that it doesn't actually need to return the... Um, it doesn't actually need to change the sprite. 
Also, I think I'm missing a semi. Yeah, I'm missing a bracket there. Okay, all right. So let's now do this. Assign player movement sprite, which actually, it may not be a great name for it. Maybe just assign player sprite. Yeah, we'll leave it as is. Okay, um, so first we're going to have, uh, we'll have a, so there's going to be a parameter. So at first, at param sprite direction, and then it'll be var sprite direction equals argument zero. Okay. All right. So this will take in the direction and then assign it. Um, I'm just noting as well that it's going to also want to know if the x speed and the y speed of the object in question No, because the facing, it's going to want to know if it's moving or not. Hmm. I wonder if it can access that variable. I think it can just access the variable outside of it. And since this is only a player one, it should be all right. Everything's going to have to have that. And in fact, I really don't need this. I could just put in facing here. And in fact, I really don't need this. It doesn't actually need a parameter. Now I think about it, because the facing is now a, a global variable, but only within the scope of this object. So actually, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, all right. So let's see. Okay, so we're going to be taking facing, and we're going to be assigning the movement sprite as necessary. So first, let's check the speed. So if x x speed and x speed equals zero and so this is uh, the assigning the idle sprite so actually I'll make a note of that equals zero it should be able to take those I think so assign idle sprite switch now this is where we use switch based on facing and it would be case up, break, case down, hmm. oops, break, case right, break, case left. And it's actually really easy. Sprite index equals s player idle up. Sprite s player idle down. Oh, excuse me. Sprite index equals s player idle right. Sprite index equals s player idle left. Oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. Okay. So, oh, and one more. Okay, now, I don't want to do an else statement, because I feel like every time I do an else statement, I get screwed over. But would an else statement, I mean, like, you'd want them to, sh like, if the x speed is not equal to zero, and the y speed is not equal to zero, that would be else, right? else let's just do that switch 
facing, and this is moving, so I'm just going to include this. Sign moving. Now, the good news is Yeah, all right. So, um the reason why I pause there is because first off, I just noticed a typo. Let's fix that. Um but the the reason I pause there is I was just thinking, you know, in Stardew Valley, for instance, when you play that game, um and you just kind of like stand around your character blinks. And therefore, what that really means is that you have an, an, an idle animation, right? And so why, why, I'm, why I'm saying this is because if you have an idle animation, then that means that if I assign the player movement sprite every single time, which, by the way, is probably not a great thing to do, it's probably a bit of a resource-intensive thing to do, and I don't know, as opposed to, like, not. Probably better just to do a check. I think I'm going to have to make a new variable, and I'm going to have it as set as motion. And it's going to be a boolean. Okay, so we'll call this one moving. I don't like that. We'll call it motion. I don't like that. That's not right either. I don't even know what to call this one. Basically, we just want it to be a boolean that every time is moving. How about that? Boom. We want it to be a boolean that... No, is... It's oh, a hard one to name properly. It only should matter here. So it should start at false. So in the move here, all right, here's what we do. If x speed is not equal to zero, or y speed is not equal to zero, is moving equals true. However, if x speed, so this is part of the move function, x speed, x speed equals zero and y speed equals, actually I could just have that set as else, couldn't I? else is moving equals false. Boom. All right. Does that work? It should. So why is that going to be there? Because when I go here, this is only going to check to see if is moving as false. Wait a minute. I already see that there's like some, I've got a spaghetti here, I've got some spaghetti going on. How about we go over here and just get this going, switch facing, oh, so is moving is true, alright, here we go, if x speed is and is moving is false, because it, it's going to change here, oh, but it's not going to change the direction of the sprite. Man, this is complicated. <laughs> hmm. 
Maybe it should be is idle. Yeah, it should actually be is idle. And that should start as true. I think about it. I mean, it's still probably not going to help. Is idle equals false. This actually makes way more sense. Is equals true. I don't. If this and is idle equal is not equal to true. If x speed equals zero and y speed equals zero and is idle equals false. So this will be actually, it'll assign it precisely at this frame once. Because the idea is basically you are checking. So everything before this, there's actually no way to slow down so unless if that hap well unless I press every button at the same time, which is the only way. But I could even adjust that to work later. Anyway, so I mean, okay. So basically, the idea is if the x speed and the y speed are equaling zero here, the move function which we need to go over again, um, is checking for collisions. Otherwise, it's going to move things, right? Um, I think this is fine. Okay, let's, uh, let's get here. So switch facing. Let's just get this done with and just try it and see what the heck happens. Honestly, I can just do all this and then just change it over. Copy, paste. But now we just change it to. Oh, I have a, I have an issue. I will. Yeah, I have everything in like a weird ass order. So how do I want it? I want the direction. I want the motion. I, will, I the placeholder thing can probably go at the end. S player idle up peach is what it should be, and then S player moving right is how it should be renamed. Can't believe I did that wrong. Yep, conventions are important. S, player, moving right. S, player, I can just leave that PH there for now, that's fine. Moving left. I have to redo all these. up. That makes more sense. This is a better convention. Moving down with the... Let's clean that up. Okay. Alright. Idle right. Rename. X. Idle right. The double one. Yep. Okay. Rename, rename, uh, this is annoying, I mean, if only I did it right the first time. Okay. All right, now let's go and fix up the names of all these, because they are all wrong. S, player, idle up. S, player, idle down. 
S player idle right. S player idle left. Okay. Wait a minute. These are all named differently than this. I chose the wrong resource. Will this nightmare ever end? Probably not. Nope, that's the wrong one. Alright. S. Player. I. P. H. I don't Now, so far, I think this is all moving right correct, but now it's moving. Player moving up. S. Player moving. Uh, PH. Uh, maybe I should put that later. I don't know. I think it's important to understand that. Knowing that it's not a complete sprite. And when I go later on to like adjust it, it won't actually be a giant pain in the butt because I can just player moving left because I think it's search in place. Okay, all right. Why does that look funny? Bring it back. Okay. So I guess it's actually not checking the previous. It's facing what? Facing. Oh. Actually, this just needs to change, and that should do the job. Yep. Okay. All right. So. If this is successful, what should happen is I should see the correct sprites being assigned when I move. Let's see if it happens. Probably won't, knowing me. Hey! It is working! Now that's interesting. Look at that. Wait. Okay, so I can already see that there's an issue with my code. But it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So it's mostly assigning the correct sprite. As you can see, it's going down, left, right, up, and it's showing it's going to be pointing in the correct direction based on how I want to do it. However, this is with the edge case scenario I wanted to check, which is where what if I'm going? Okay. 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 I see the issue actually. I figured it out. So if I move left. I go back to the idle left, but then if I move left again, I remain idle, and that is not correct. I think that's actually the whole problem. It'll probably repeat if I do up. Yep. Okay. Because I thought I would see an issue with diagonal directions, but it's really not that. It's something else. So, in other words, something doesn't change here. And then, because... Alright, so it's back where... I know where the problem is. It's right here. Previous facing equals facing. If and is moving is true. No, because then it's going to assign the new sprite each time. You know, I already know that I'm going to have to go back into this and adjust this to, to include the correct sprite index. So, let's see. Alright, actually, it's, it's very simple. And is... 
idle equals true. This should actually do it, I think. Did I do that right syntactically? <laughs> it's worse than it was before. All right, I mean, it's the same. Okay. If facing... I mean, like, if I just got rid of that, it would work, right? But the issue is, is I just don't... Here, actually, let me, let me show. Let me just show why I don't want this to happen. And maybe I'm wrong. No. So if x speed is not equal to zero... So basically, if we're moving in any direction, it's going to check our facing. We're going to assign the facing. Facing equals a science break by direction, so it's going to determine which way to go. And then if facing, the new facing, is different than the old facing, then it assigns a sprite. This one's going to require a bit of thinking, although it's getting there. I mean, I'm assigning a sprite. I mean, like, there's an easy way out, and I just don't want to do it. I flip this. I actually might do it. It might like start a step late, but that's probably okay. Nope, it's worse than it was before. <laughs> So facing is not equal to previous facing. What if, all right, so what if the facing is equal to previous facing? Ah, okay, okay, so what I need to do then is if facing is equal to previous facing and is idle equals true, Remembering that this is right before the actual move. This is only if we're moving. Assign player movement sprite. That should do it. Alright, we did it. Yay! I'm so happy. All right. So motion is working. Excellent. All right. Whew. This takes a lot of time. All right. I think that about does it for today. I only did a very basic thing, but I'm happy with what I did. And I think it came out pretty clean. Um, I mean... I think that's the biggest thing, is like when I do coding projects, my biggest problem is often I just don't make them clean. This seems clean so far. Um, now, there's probably ways to fix this code up. Um, especially here. And I do want to see if I can make a general movement one. Because, like, the thing is, I already know that, like, 
this is, this whole script here, the assigned player movement, is going to be a problem because later on, when I have workers or something like that, or other characters, each one of them is going to need their own script, and that doesn't seem right. So there's got to be a way to make uh, groups of sprites. So I'm going to have to look into that. But for now, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. I'm going to be, actually, I will be doing this again this evening at about 8.45 or so, uh, for about half an hour or so. I might do some more this afternoon. I'm going to be uh, making these videos every time I can. I don't care about keeping a schedule. I don't care about, um, at, like, I mean, I don't want to say, like, I don't care about you, but I do. It's just that I need to do this for me. This is my dev blog. See y'all later.